Hello there. I bet you'll wonder where I've been. Well, Janeiro and I had the, quite frankly, fantastic idea of going to North America and experiencing how they play League of Legends across the pond for ourselves, which led us, as you can imagine, straight to the airport. So they, they headed straight to the airport, and after security checked to make sure no one was going to end the trip or anything funny like that, they both went to the shop, they got some refillable potions, you know, to stay hydrated on the long flight, and when they were on the plane, they finally had a chance to read up on what they could expect here in North America. So for the first series, there was CLG Faith and 300, two teams both fighting to position themselves for playoffs and as top amateur teams as well as two of the top contenders for playoffs in the second series today with Jake's Kittens and AoE Ginger Turmeric, both looking strong. Yeah, bam, but turbulence started. The plane is absolutely shaking. People are screaming that we need to play a safe. We need to wait to scale out a little longer. Kids are starting to write GG go next. And the worst of all is the flight attendants are running it down the lane, just like every single one of my solo queue players. And, you know, everyone's screaming, it'll pass in a couple of minutes. We got told to put our seatbelts on and, in true American fashion, just sit on the tower and play safe. We were informed, once again, if we were to just scale it out, it would all be past us soon. But and... as, the as the turbulence started to calm a little bit, as the masks dropped, we know what time it is here in NA. We take a nice, deep breath. And with the amount of hopium that we inhaled from those masks, myself, Ginny, and Veteran have become full-on NA supporters through and through for the remainder of this broadcast. I did not endorse that bit. Oh no, Sniper, don't take the bait, bro. Don't take the bait. Don't fall for it. The World Ender does get dropped, but the smokes are coming out here. They're trying to find something, but just too much healing coming up from Sniper. He's a big boy, and Lawrence is not oh. quite small. He's doing a whole lot of damage. Can he try and get so here? He's so close. He has to stealth immediately out of this brush and wouldn't have to oh, he did. fight. He's doing it all the same. Here we go. Cyclone lands out at three. The fight might have begun. Beautiful scatter will be coming out from Toast, but Exist is coming with the teleport as well. Lifting all by lands on it too. Toasty in a bit of trouble. Will get taken down, but he has the wild growth on top of him. Watch Stoner on the backside. He's still alive. He's still doing Ooh. damage, but finally Deke Larry takes him down. We got that Ooh. tier wave there. We do see the call coming out from Sketch trying to find anything on Azog here. It's going to get him somewhat low, but don't quite find oh. anything. Curtain call does get dropped though. The wow. flash coming out from Sketch to escape until the three man body block should keep him alive. Oh, look at that from the back line. Huge cycle coming out, and they grab three. They grab With that 3k HP just uh, trying to see what he can do. They feel all fair and it has reset the vanguard's edge leo has gone in they are just going in deep the Mudo trying to see what he can do into the back line he is cleaning out in the back line and now it's the solo landers trying to see what they can make happen he's trying oh. to see if he can snip down the hp bars a little further but they get divided and caught to get to safety but he's all the tp flanks here they got the double tp and it is just going to be them going berserk the super mega death rocket doesn't pick up Top anything. Oh. They got Warren over onto the side, and it is Robbie Bob putting on a clinic. Air is all on his own, and CLG Town will soon follow as Robbie Bob gets a triple kill. Taco Gaming looking to press in onto the second hit. Orca. Orca is face tanking and takes down Actor. This is the tank, Kogma. Oh my goodness, so much damage, so much durability. Triple? Orca has been unofficially unlocked here in this game. A triple kill. Could be more as well. Ariandel in a lot of trouble. City when he's going to dash forward. Tomato and the Galio underneath the fountain. They don't want to go for it just yet. Gorka could tank a little bit more. That's an unofficial quadra kill for the Kogma. And the aggression for Supernova was good. But did you ever have the doubt? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the third day of Approving Ground Circuit Qualifiers. I'm Janeiro, your host for this evening, and joining me on the desk today, we got Veteran, we got Five Fire. Guys, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. You know, always awesome to be a guest here on the Academy stream. Always love doing some analysis for these teams. We've got some pretty exciting series today. I'll be here for this first one, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. Honestly, I'm excited. I haven't actually done like a full NA desk before, and NA Amateur is like the next big thing, right? Got all the nice ERLs established, and now it's time for North America to show that it has talent coming up as well. 
Yeah, we're going to be looking at the approving ground circuit qualifiers. So these teams here, they're playing for a spot in the LCS proving grounds, which again is something that every single player would like to achieve. But that's not the only thing that's actually on the line. They're also competing for something that every single player and team would love to have regardless of the amount of experience and that's going to be the twitter bragging rights but first of all you're gonna have to win these matches today we got some two bangers coming your way starting it off with the lower brackets where we're going to be looking at clg faith versus 300 followed by the upper bracket where we're going to be looking at jake's kittens versus ginger turmeric airy and i think both of these all of every single one of these teams really they have so much on the line but let's start it off with uh, Group A and Group B overview specifically. Veteran, when we're looking at these graphics specifically, looking at the teams that have made it through so far, is this exactly what you expected to see? Um, more or less. I wouldn't say that there were any like absolutely huge upsets. And I, re I think the current matchups coming in are actually really, really well balanced. So I think good job on all the teams that have made it in so far. I think particularly like with teams like Jake's Kittens, we have like so so many uh, more veteran players coming in, but you also do have some really nice performances from the from the from the newer talent uh, as well. And like even though you do have some kind of old guard playing, uh, when it comes to, for example, Prismal on Jake's Kittens, like his role swap is already really interesting in and of itself. And he's had a really major impact on it already. For for me, he's like the the best support in amateur right now. Okay, well, that's pretty big statement. We still got Group C and Group D to be looking at here. Five Fire. And some of these teams have made it through. Some of these teams, unfortunately, they're also going to be in those lower brackets. But looking at the way the standing is at this point for these groups, anything standing out to you that you think might not have been what you expected? Um, so I think things more or less went as expected. I would say Group D, you see, you know, a couple of 2 0s there uh, were some pretty clean series from those teams. Uh, but then when we do look over at Group C and we look at the match that we're going to have today from 300 and CLG Faith, those were both two ones. They were some yeah. fighting series on both ends there. Group C is really looking like it's going to become an absolute banger. Um, so I'm really looking forward to those games. And, you know, I think both of those teams that we have in our first lower bracket match today really have a lot to show. They're two teams that have a decent number of, like, really talented, good players. Obviously, CLG Faith has the backing of CLG. They really want to show up and and you know do good for their lcs org so uh, i think both the teams are going to be really really fighting today because i think both of them could deserve a, a spot in playoffs and could make a deep run but they have to make it through today so yeah you're absolutely correct today it's do or die for both of these teams here if you lose this match you're out and unfortunately as you said it yourself by fire these teams they want a shot at playoffs they want to prove themselves they want to show us exactly what they're made of lucky for us we've had two play days already veteran and we've kind of had a test of uh, the waters we kind of have been made aware of what these teams are good at so let's have a look at clg faith first of all what has this team really excelled at yet fallen short considering that they haven't actually won last time honestly what well, like even though they weren't winning it's not like they were just waiting to lose even in their uh, vladimir mid game they actually did a lot of things around the map their jungler for instance plays really heavily mostly by default to top but if his bot lane starts getting early advantages he plays incredibly heavily to that and even though town hasn't really been a Requiring the pressure every single game, whenever he does get the slightest window to roam, he does, and he actually does make it count. So it's going to be a lot on whether or not they are allowed to unlock town for how many waves they do it. If they just mm -hmm. get one opportunity, we've seen that they can take fights in these early skirmishes. And then the issue for them just becomes translating it into the five on five. But how I think in this particular matchup, it might end up going is that 300 will look to contest those early skirmishes in particular, and they may not even get to the team fight stage with a decent economy if 300's game plan goes well. And Five Fire, speaking about CLG Faith and how they've planned out their games, the skirmishes happening maybe earlier on towards Riverside, towards the jungle, how important is this mid lane matchup going to be for this game specifically, considering how CLG Faith has been playing? 
So it's going to be extremely important, mainly actually because of how 300 has been playing around the mid lane. I know Veteran has been a big Leo fan. He was talking about how he's been going off on this guy for the past year. Uh, and definitely 300 are making use of him very well. He's a player that does play a lot of the very aggressive stuff. Sometimes we saw a lot of Trindamir, we saw some Aurelia, things like this. Um, and, you know, if CLG Faith are more content to just sit back and try to scale, you know, pick things like the Vladimir mid that really, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, it gets no prio. It doesn't fight for anything, right? And a player like Leo can, you know, take it a talent yeah. for that. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but uh, so it'll be really interesting, I think, to see if 300 attack mid lane and if they can actually get big advantages off that. Like Veteran said, if CLG gets an inch, they can take a mile, but we'll have to see if they actually even get that first inch. And then one... Other thing that I do just want to quickly mention is with CLG subbing in low pally for support, who mm -hmm. uh, was their coach, it could maybe bring about a bit of a play style change. I did play with low pally way back in the day. I played top lane for him one time when he was a support player. Uh, and, you know, he was doing a lot of that coaching role, even in game, you know, directing a lot of things, making a lot of good macro plays, good macro calls. So we'll have to see if we get those from CLG Faith today. Yeah, so it looks yeah. like both of these teams do have something that they really, a game plan that they really have to stick to. Veteran, is there anything that's highlighted in the performance of CLG Faith or Tree 100 specifically in the past couple of days that you think we really need to be a bit wary of because that could put them down? I mean, I'm really interested in the implications of, of low pally being there because so far they only play to bot if bot itself has acquired 2v2 advantages before. Maybe if they switch up their game plans and try to attack bot from an earlier position indiscriminant of how level 1, 2, 3 goes, that would actually be a new, almost unscouted CLG that they might be unprepared for. The big issue that I see, though, is I fully agree with what Firefire said with regards to, for example, the Galio Champel coming in from town. Almost everything town plays, Leo has an answer to. And what should be an issue for Leo is that most of what he plays is like bruises like Renekton or AD champions like Jace. But in the current meta, where you have champions like Lilia and like Karthus being really, really strong in the jungle, it actually has really good synergies, a lot of the options they have there. And this is a team that plays so heavily 2v2 that the fact mm -hmm. that you mostly just see side lane ganks from uh, Perry on the side of CLG could actually be an issue. They need to set up mid towards bot. Or maybe Lol Pally sets up mid himself with the kind of support rooms we've so far only really seen from Prismal. If he does that, he could maybe fix the mid lane problem for them in terms of not necessarily playing around it as a grouping, because 300 will attack it as a group. He is very good on his own, but it's going to be like a team play strategic tactical difference that could really break mid section open for 300. So that mid lane focus from 300, something that CLG Faith is going to have to be wary about. But on the other hand of things, near 300, they're also in this lower group run as well. They also have to fight for their lives in this game, specifically Five Fire. So what has been lacking from their performance? We know they lost 2 and one last day, play day, which is play day two. So it's not like they haven't actually won a single game. They just haven't won a series. So what is lacking in terms of their performance and what do they need to push today if they want to walk away with that win you know when when i watched 300 and i didn't catch all 100 percent of their games but definitely the parts i did catch it was a lot of just classic amateur stuff in my eyes you know i've been around for a <laughs> while i've seen these things happen every now and again and a lot of it is just at the beginning of these splits you know these very first tournaments the teams just lack you know that little extra bit of cohesion in in all mm -hmm. stages of the game whether that's in draft early game decision making late game team fighting like macro calls everything is just a little bit off and i feel like sometimes 300 can kind of really get swept away by it while some teams are able to like really slow it down stem the bleeding you know take a step back and decide what they need to do next 300 just pushes the gas pedal even harder they're like okay we're just going to keep going even more 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 you know i know players like leo like raheen like to play these aggressive champions they like to make all these plays sometimes it's okay to chill guys it's okay to scale mm -hmm. It's okay to play for your win conditions, okay to play for your item spikes. So really from 300, you know, it might not happen this series, but definitely as we move forward with Proving Grounds, and especially if they move on past this series, I do want to see them, you know, slowly grow that cohesion over time. It's not the end of the world if it's not there, you know, for the very first tournament. You know, Lord knows I never performed very well in my first tournaments, but definitely by the end, you want to have it. 
Well, take it easy, play to your strengths, scale up. I think this is advice that we can be taking into solo queue as well. So if you're watching Twitch chat, make sure you're writing that down. But veteran, looking at CLG's side of things, and we heard Five Fire speak about the draft specifically, you know, those aggressive type yep. of champions coming through. Are you expecting CLG to be taking this into consideration? And if so, what do you think their draft might be looking like, considering that they really like those early skirmishes? Yeah, I mean, Five Fire's um, contention that 300 might not really understand how to slow down the pace. Um, I start thinking, could this be a good or bad thing for CLG Faith? Because mm. CLG typically, when it gets to those 5v5 teamfight sections, even if they've, for example, played very heavily around their quite well hyped top laner, they normally don't try to translate that into a solo lane lead and just opt in for the skirmishes anyway. The only times I've actually seen them win teamfights is when they're able to catch someone out individually. So maybe 300 are a bit too happy on the trigger pull and go in one by one. They may just convey that into CLG and that could actually give them a good teamfight condition. But on the flip side of that, would CLG Faith respond to a team that's just going to consistently keep bringing in 5v5s over and over again, where CLG have typically relied on opponents' mistakes and actually looks somewhat weak? For me, that's what I'm going to look for in this series in particular when we get to that 5v5 stage. It's not as simple as like, one team is just going to be better than the other one. I can see yeah. options either way. And Fire, how important do you think that early game is going to be for both of these teams specifically, considering the aggressive play style we see from 300, the fact that CLG really like to focus on those skirmishes as well. How important are those first few minutes going to be? And which lane should we really be keeping an eye out within the first six minutes? It's, it's a very interesting conundrum because part of me wants to say, like, of course, these early games are going to be very important. You know, like we said, the mid 2v2 for 300 is really, really key. You know, CLG Faith maybe is looking for more of these late game situations. So they don't want to fall too far behind early. But I'll be honest, I feel like both of these teams could just randomly win games, right? They can just pull it out of nowhere, randomly turn on the gas, have everything hit correctly, and just boom win a game even if they're a bit behind early game even if 300's early game doesn't get off to a crazy good start and like one player who i do want to mention that you you briefly mentioned clg's top laner draco i have seen him do go both ways you know very top laner mm -hmm. thing to do in amateur i've seen fights where he did zero damage and instantly died and i've seen fights <laughs> where he basically soloed the entire enemy team as gwen and he didn't need any support to do mm -hmm. it right he just had the perfect angle yeah. perfect flank played around his immunity you know all that great stuff so it, it's going to be tough. You know, I want to say early game is super important, but, you know, especially as people are still trying to figure out this crazy new patch that we've had with all these massive changes and things like that, as people, you know, are still trying to get their bearings on these new teams with these new players, you can always just go to late game. You can always flip yeah. a Baron. You never know what will happen. So, yeah, yeah it, it, it'll be a bit crazy, I think. Yeah, maybe we're going to be seeing some burger flips in, but Veteran, we saw, we talked about Draco and how that is one of those yeah. players that we're going to be looking out for. Is that going to be impacting your prediction in regards to what team you're going to be voting for? Is there another player that's that or another prediction maybe that you want to throw our way? Do you think it's going to be CLG? Do you think it's going to be 300? Which one and why? I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Leo simp, so I very strongly okay. believe in their 2v2, um, for sure, to carry them through the early skirmish portion where CLG look the scariest. From when Five Five mentioned the Gwen, I actually remember that Drake fight where Gwen almost one shot two members of the enemy team on a kind of poorly timed Wukong flank. But at the same time, I'm thinking CLG actually consistently able to bounce wave states to get people like Draco onto the item spikes need to be effective in the fights. And yet that's one of the only times I've actually seen them pull off a team fight effectively. So I think the fact that they're going to be on su under such pressure and may not even be able to get those wave states to scale just makes me want to lock in 300 even more. Plus, Leo for life, all right? Go okay. get some ass, brother. Okay, I have to say 20300 here. Well, Five Fire, are you agreeing with this prediction? Are you going to be going for 300? Are you going to be going for CLG, Faith? Which one's on your cards? Yeah, so I I somewhat agree with Veteran. Like I said, I think this is going to be a fighting series. I'll be very surprised okay. if both the teams are content just to sit back and do nothing. Mm. Even if even if it does happen, I think we might get some bangers in the late game. I'm hoping that not many of these games are just decided by some random seven or eight minute fight where you know one team just gets a massive lead. I'm really hoping we get into those soul situations. Maybe some elder situations would be really hype. But I do think in the end that uh, 300 has the slight edge, and so I'm giving them the 2-1. 
Okay, well, I'm absolutely happy to see that both analysts on desk today are agreeing on which team is going to be walking away. I'm going to be that guy, and I'm going to be going for a CLG Faith just to add a little bit more spice onto these predictions. I do, however, think that this is going to be a very close game, regardless of which team is going to be taking it away. There is a lot of good players. These are really good players individually, very well gifted mechanically, but it's just that matter of how well are they going to be gelling together as a five-man? How good are they going to be able to play off? Off of each other are they gonna be able to get those communications down can they get those early skirmishes when can they play out those team fights the way that we expect and maybe need them to so guys if you want to be part of the action if you want to give us live updates don't forget to tweet hashtag we are unified and who knows might be coming out with a twitter banger we got the casters on desk today we got grapes we got smacks they're on the mic guys take it away Thank you very much, Genie. On behalf of everyone here at Unified, I'd like to welcome you and Veteran here to the NA squad, here onto the good sides here. <laughs> uh, and speaking of that, we got, you know, it's, it's school's coming out, finals are starting to happen. We got, you know, CeeLo coming up, Smack, so you're going to be taking a flight very, yeah. very soon. Um, and so, you know, we got the drip here. We got the student drip, Tufts University, Michigan State yes. University. Here we go. Uh, we're just super excited to get into, um, you know, the, the end of school, the start of summer, and also the third day of the Proving Grounds. Op uh, circuit qualifier here in the summer split. I'm Graves again alongside Smacks. So, Sam, this is a, a pretty exciting series. Do or die here for both of these teams. Yeah, we got a lot of elimination matches today. We have this first one here for CLG and 300. We have both elimination matches on the other stream. And this is your reminder that we do have two streams going. Path yeah. to LCS over there on the other Twitch channel has two elimination matches. I believe that is Rude and Echo casting over them. So, uh, this is a two monitor, two monitor count a day, everybody. But uh, yeah, to talk a little bit more about this particular matchup, 300 versus CLG Faith is like the desk shouted out, potentially going to be one of the closest matchups that we've had to date. We haven't had any seeding upsets so far in this tournament, but I'm feeling like today might be the day. I yeah, I think based on the predictions that our analysts also went with, it seems like we are potentially poised for that to happen. 300, the 14th seed versus CLG Faith, the 11th seed. Uh, that would be, I believe, the first upset in terms of seeding that we've had so far. Yeah. But I wouldn't be, you know, calling it an upset, so to speak, when we just take a look at the strength of both of these teams. Because, as you said, it really could go either way. 300 looked very, very strong against one of the top programs here in amateur and AOE esports. While on the other side, CLG played, a, again, another very close series against Team Pending, who are, you know, consisting of a lot of players that will be SC low this weekend. Yeah, and I don't know if everyone has fully realized this quite yet, but we do have a few roster shakeups today in this particular matchup. If you saw the games last week from 300, may have been confused as to where Perry was. Turns out he was taking a vacation week, but that has ended. He is back to take that starting spot like we saw 300 do in the open qualifier, and he will be playing jungle for the team, reuniting the Evil Geniuses, Prodigies mid lane and jungle duo of last split. Very, very exciting stuff. This likely will make the team a bit stronger, although I did enjoy the way that Naima approached the mid jungle from the last series that we watched. Yeah, I, I do think, though, every time that you are replacing a role so influential like the jungle position does really make it harder for, you know, some of the team to, to really function in, you know, such high stakes games, even against eight, the likes of AOE Esports. But 300 still look very good against that team that is seated number three in our bracket right now. And, and talking to Raheen, he said, you know, man, if we had, you know, just our full team, it, it could really be dangerous. We could play against the top of the top. And that's where they're going to want to prove here as we head into the draft for game number one. Yeah, we saw some very quick victories from them. Very quick qualification for this tournament from the open qualifier. I'm expecting him to be able to back up those words, Raheen over there. Roll swapping down to the support position. You know, I can't say that we're very surprised for this. You can tell that he's always had it in him. He's always been that in-game leader. And, you know, to be honest, I feel like he just talked too much for an AD carry. Those guys are just <laughs> supposed to click, and he, he's talking all the time. So glad to see him take that position. Apart from him... Uh, opposite there is Low Pally, the coach for CLG, stepping in to that role. Trevor will not be here today. And I think that we, we're kind of discussing what 
the implications were there for CLG. And I think the general consensus is that Lopali and Trevor have a very similar style. And I think Lopali also excelling in the kind of communication aspect as well could be really beneficial for CLG, who did find themselves a little bit scrambling um, in that last series against Team Pending. And so we'll you know see how that ends up working, how the coordination is, because as Adesh said, very much looking forward to the team fights here in this series. Starting off with the first ban phase, Lilia already taken off the board for Perry, as well as that Fiora for Draco. Yeah, these two, uh, not the most uh, heavily prioritized champions in the game right now, of course, across the entire tournament. However, when you do look at what happened for CLG Faith in their last matchup, every single game, the bands were Fiora, Gwen, and Camille, all three in the first phase. He did not get his hands on any of those champions at any stage. Also banned against him were things like the Aatrox and other blind picks in the second phase. So teams are very, very keenly aware that Draco has a very specific champion pool that he is very dangerous on. And it looks like that is going to continue to be looked at by 300. Yeah, we're, we're two out of three, four now. I will say I'm really excited to see this top lane matchup. I think that Draco and Jisung yeah. are both very new players that have really shown like different flashes of greatness so far in both the open qualifier and in the main stage, specifically towards the later game stages when these teams do get to the team fights. Draco and Jisung both have looked very impressive, but for Draco might be on something other than comfort as those are the, uh, you know, the typical three top lane bans against him. When you do have a, cha uh, a player that has these very specific champions that he plays very well and those are forced to ban, forced to be banned though, you do get your hands on some very powerful champions and CLG being on blue team will now have that opportunity. They removed some of the recently reworked really broken picks like the Talia and the Wukong, but really powerful stuff like the Lucian and the Nami that we've been seeing a whole lot of recently. The Senna also was available to them. They didn't do any of that though, Grapes. They went for the Viego Denial from Perry. I was a little bit interested to see that Wukong ban on the blue side for CLG because I was expecting Baco to pretty heavily prioritize that. Instead, will be the Viego, another playmaker here for Baco that can scale pretty well into the late game. On the other side, that Senna can go either towards Minui or Raheen. We've seen 300's bot lane do some pretty crazy things and be pretty crazy in terms of the draft. But on the other side, CLG, they want a hyper carry here onto Aaron. The Aphelios Lulu coming down the 2-3. Aaron, one of the only players in the entire tournament still piloting the Aphelios, really fallen out of favor for a lot of the other players in favor of these Senna lanes, things like the Lucian and the Nami. Um, we, we have some Jin players as oh. well bouncing around, uh, but not Aaron. He's playing this Aphelios. Like you said, a hyper carry potentially with the Lulu makes it even more likely. And hyper carry they will need because they are now against a big HP stacking Titan in the Cho'Gath. Now, Probably going to go going towards the bot lane, if I had to assume. Senna Cho'Gath is yeah. one of those pairings, but, you know, there still is some flexibility. Could go top, could even go mid. And I know Leo has, like, a crazy champion pool, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that landing in one of those solo lanes as well. But it seems like the bot lanes for both of these teams, as well as the junglers, have been locked in, which means solo lane focus in the second phase. Senna Cho'Gath is so obnoxious to play against Grapes. I'm really hoping that this die. is going to be the lane because you have so many slows here with the Senna, uh, the Senna Q and then the Cho'Gath spikes. They very easily will set up for that rupture. And uh, Aaron and Lopali will not have a lot of mobility at all. You can polymorph the Cho'Gath, but the rupture will still come through and you will still get knocked up and give him a lot of time to run you down. So very dangerous lane to be playing against the Cho'Gath with... We'll see if that actually is the pair. I really like that one. A lot of mid lane bands have come through, and I believe the Vladimir can be flexed to both Draco and Town. Yeah, definitely so. Even the Victor here is, that is a very big takeaway from Town as well. It seems like that's kind of the, the priority here, but uh, it, it does seem like, you know, Leo could be, I was going to say, Leo could be going for some of the AD mid laners with that Cho'Gath already locked in, but the Azir is something that he relied on in game number three of their last series, and it's going to be in his hands again. Yeah, they've already got two magic damage dealing champions because Cho'Gath, you're, you're expecting to be going for some magic damage when he is in a carry position uh, for likely Manui. I really enjoy the Everfrost build because it just gives you another way to guarantee that you hit Rupture. It's really OP and you get just a million HP anyway. So uh, lots of magic damage here. I'm expecting them to save that counter pick for Jisung. And that's something that Draco cannot do right now. He likely will go back to that Aatrox that we've seen him blind a couple of times. 
Yep, there it is. I actually am surprised to see the uh, Akali here for Town. He did very well on it in their last series, but against the likes of Senna Cho'Gath, even a Graves, a lot of durability there, and maybe not a whole lot of one-shot potential, especially if this gets locked in here on the five. would be basically four tanks that, that uh, <laughs> Town would have to go up against on the Akali, and it would also mean that that Cho'Gath is going to the top lane. Yeah, that, that'd be way too boring, though, Graves. Yeah. You gotta switch it up. You gotta go for the Jay's counterpick. There it is. Jisung is bringing the heat for this first game, trying to go for a lot of damage from this roll, trying to make sure they have even more range damage to work with, too, because you've got the hyper carries, you've got the scaling threats of the Azir and the Senna that are going to deal a lot of damage from range later, but now with the Jace, you can soften them up to give them more room to move around a team fight and let Leo more reliably dive in with the Sharima shuffles and that that goes for parry too so I think this Jace works really well in conjunction with all these champions it just needs to survive this land against Draco's Aatrox yeah, and, and I think laning phase is where both of these top laners kind of have met a little bit of adversity in so far in the summer split. And Jisung on a champion that, that does get that heavy priority if played correctly. A lot of pressure here on this young top laner, I believe 17 years old, first competitive roster um, in the Proving Ground circuit. Uh, and along the likes of some other players who have been around for quite a long time. Um, very excited to see kind of the growth of this player, and, and this is the perfect situation to kind of see that happen. Yeah, we've mentioned that Perry and Leo are coming directly from the Evil Geniuses Prodigies team also. As that mid-jungle duo, they've got that competitive experience working directly with an LCS affiliate roster. Raheen has done the same as well on Radiance Dignitas as well. Dignitas, Radiance, some order there. The first <laughs> split of this year he's playing on that team, of course, as a different role. But, you know, Grapes, Santa... This, this might just feel like Raheem's going back to his old times yeah, here, true. playing another marksman. <laughs> it's funny, yeah, like, even when he's playing support, he's still able to pick yeah. that marksman here in the Senna. It, it speaks <laughs> to how well Minui is able to kind of flex around as well, being able to pick up these things, whether it's the Talia or, or Vagar that we saw in the open qualifiers, or now on a Cho'Gath. Very interesting stuff to see out of 300, and, and we'll see it, how it ends up doing. On to the Rift for the first series of Day 3 of the Proven Ground Circuit Qualifiers. I, I was excited to watch this bottom lane matchup, but first our eyes have to track up here top mm. where we Let's find all of 300 just stacking up here. Trying to get some top lane priority with this early, early ward here for Jisung. I like this one, just making sure that he can play in and out of these brushes and harass Draco, even though he, tr he may try to get out of that vision. Uh, and I believe we'll just get a swap over to the sweeper as soon as we get our scoreboard updated. Yep, I mean, brush control always important here in the top side, but even more important when it's a range versus melee matchup, Jisung will be able to really have a whole lot of impact in that early stage of the game with that extra ward, extra vision, you know, set up there in the top side of the map. The early clears for this game, I think, will be interesting. Parry and Baco, maybe not necessarily the, the most um, gank heavy in the early game junglers, but with all these volatile lanes going on, I wouldn't be surprised to see some early action. Harry looks like he may be clearing away from his bottom lane, though. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of sustain here with the Cho'Gath passive and the Senna healing. It's just perhaps going to be a bit concerning, because as I always say here, Grapes, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm going to say. Double ranged matchup for CLG means you yeah. really do want to impact that lane very early on, because those two will be very snowball-y, and they can take over a lane very quickly, uh, especially considering low pally actually does have Arcane Comet, so more poke damage there. Yeah, even more. I, I'm surprised to kind of see that, because I feel like when you have Seta Cho'Gath, you just have so many heals left and right. Maybe the poke, not as worth it, but but right now is that early priority generated there by that double range matchup in the bot side. believe this will probably be the state of this lane, at least for the time being. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that Manui is going to be healing that up. Like you were, like you were saying, Every single minion he kills, he healed just so much. And that's likely why Lopali was trying to trade heavily onto Raheen. Raheen, not right. so lucky there. And that's Ooh. a really nice crescendum attack. Uh, Calibrum, excuse me. I gotta, I gotta play more Legends of Runeterra so I memorize <laughs> these names. Yeah, it, there's, there's all these, like, diff C names, so many different, like, there's Crescendum as well, <laughs> there's Severum. I mean, it, it's, it's a lot. Even, even for, like, a play-by-play, -play, you, like, kind of has to know it a little bit more. Yeah. Still, still not very fun. I know we had this whole conversation about like different item names as well. I mean, for the Felius guns, very similar, very similar stuff. Yeah, but I mean, like I was saying, in Legends of Runeterra, they're they're all their own different cards, so mm. it's it's easier to to work on them. But I haven't played many Felius decks. Maybe that's something I either work on. 
No. Yeah, you. I, I remember we were talking about uh, the the new team fight tactics set and how you were gonna maybe teach me a little bit. Yes. About that, but, but All not, right. Not yet, right? Okay. What? You have something? Not yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah, got a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. T the t the new TFT set is very fun. Uh, that is the first thing I'm gonna say. I'll, I'll leave it there. That's lesson. There are one. a lot of cool dragons. It's uh, it's really good. Yeah. The the first lesson for winning in TFT is to have fun. You know. As in you all games. Yeah, as, as in all games. Hopefully these guys having some fun as well. See Baco, Jet <laughs> Dernit going down here towards the bot side. We'll just be able to pick up this bot lane scuttle. Interesting enough, still is level three, just hitting four off of that. Um, yeah, what makes it fun, Smacks? That's our next lesson. Maybe maybe what next makes week. It after fun? the after the syllabus week. This is like the that's the first week of class with the powerpoints and everything. Okay, yeah. Well, we'll get to that later. That is definitely lesson two. For now, we've got Perry. He has fully cleared his own jungle. He's taken the scuttle crab and uh, was thinking about going for a recall, but. I really don't think this mid angle is going to work. Likely just shadowing in, in case Bako arrives and helping him uh -oh. push in this wave. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Town, Town goes far. Town does go for the trade. Leo dashing forward, not landing the damage there on the E though. Perry still sitting around just to make sure Town doesn't go for anything too aggressive. Does have the, only the Doran shield and the teleport. So a very uh, uh, defensive early start. But there Perry goes. Edit the line will proc that Dark Harvest. And overall, not a too, you know, not too bad of a, of a set of events here for 300. Taking a lot of time out of his day, though, Perry, just to push in this wave. It'll give Leo a really nice back right now, and it actually will allow him to come back in a, at a good moment and make sure he doesn't lose too many of these minions. Might not even choose to teleport. Oh, it looks like Town is actually sticking around, so the teleport will be used instead. Um, but it's still a, a good thought there from Perry, and you just go right back Ooh. to clearing. Night pop down on the bot side. Raheen, pretty low on mana as well as HP. Minwe doesn't have much as well, so just going to be the trade of summoners to get that wave in bounds. It looks like the side of CLG Faith will go for that reset. Already a pretty big advantage there in that double range 2v2. Mm, this one actually will be a really favorable lane state right now because that is crashed underneath the turret. There's no way that Minui and Raheen could possibly freeze that unless they save their own minion wave and let the let the enemies come into them. Uh, which it looks like they might be doing, but they will give Aaron and Low Pally a lot of time to come back onto the rift, and this could very easily translate into a fir first dragon for CLG. We'll find out what Bako's thinking here. Yeah, it's first move for Low Pally onto the map as well, is able to roam over to this mid lane area, still towards the bottom half quadrant, but will allow Bako to clear out Savision, and as you said, Smax, that first dragon is up for the taking. Resets did come in for 300, we'll see what CLG do. Something that I got from talking to Myra about the support swap here was that Lopali, he, he doesn't change the play style of the team very much. He just fit right in. And something that they, they really wanted to do with like his his experience with comms and him being like the coach now stepping in and coaching the team even inside the game um, was that he he's really good at the early game comms and they have a lot of faith in him and the rest of the team to win early game and then snowball from there. We're seeing a bit of that right now as they do indeed go for that first Drake translated off of the bottom lane pressure and you know, we're, we're seeing low poly himself he, he's calling all of these shots making sure that his lane does not go unnoticed his efforts are here and he's trying to get them the win even though he's subbing in for trevor yeah you know you gotta gotta do your part no matter what position you're in low poly just maybe a little bit of extra responsibility this time around piloting this lulu here on this mm. support role see a bit of a more trading down in the bot side aaron still significantly ahead in cs uh, a little bit of a scary situation, but it looks like this bot lane for CLG will continue to snowball a little bit more. As a, a subtle move there for Lopali, but he walks forward and tanks the Senna root just so that Aaron does not get rooted himself. Ooh. So really heads up play there from Lopali. He knew that like there's no way that Aaron could get out of that. So uh, I like that one a lot. Aaron certainly would have been poked out of this lane, which he hasn't been able to say for himself so far. Manui and Raheen have not been able to bully him whatsoever again partially because of that ranged matchup that they're in and parry not helping them out at all you can see that reflected in the cs totals manui is really struggling in that department yeah and in terms of just the way the junglers have been able to maneuver the map as well bako getting that steal in onto the second blue buff will run into parry here eventually but yeah so far have definitely seen a lot more top side focus for 300 we saw parry hovering around jisung for a little bit before going for that reset um, and, and again, it's just both of these teams playing towards the lanes that they have priority in. Both junglers at this level six marker. Bako just trying to shadow for this gank. But again, Perry, he's just 
pretending the bottom lane doesn't exist. He's like, all right, you're weak side Cho'Gath. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to keep farming. I'm going to make sure that I have Ooh. the scaling on Graves and be that big team fight menace later on. Uh, and, you know, maybe just give more time for Jisung to do that much damage to mm -hmm. Draco. Doesn't look like he's having a very fun time on this blind pick. I feel like this kind of encapsulates pretty well what 300 have been doing so far. It's been a lot of Raheen and Perry, or, or Naima, in that last series, roaming around the map together. We see it right here um, on the reset there for the 300 bot lane. And Minui kind of just being left out to dry a little bit here. Um, now on the Cho'Gath, it's pretty easy to kind of sustain and sit in that side lane by yourself. Um, but yeah, again, just not a whole lot of focus there on this bottom side. I always love when you can see players decision making like live right, right. there. We just got to see <laughs> Jisung channel his recall and he's like, wait a second, I can go get 160 gold by just attacking this turret one time. <laughs> and now he's stuck in this lane with not a lot of mana because he did that. No teleport either. He likely has a lot of gold in his pocket and uh, by staying here, he doesn't actually spend that, but he does stay in top lane and perhaps will be able to help out his team on this Herald. Yeah, we'll see what ends up happening here. 300 definitely have the numbers advantage at the moment. Sure can miss it from town, but Baco will steal away that first Rift Trial. Is going to flash to secure the buff, and it looks like CLG Faith will get out with that robbery. Man, 25 HP on the smite. Baco, he gets a second objective. It's really good for CLG yeah. that they were able to get first Drake and first Herald. That's going to be a lot of gold. And... Uh, Thinking about how they've been playing and which lane they have been giving a lot of these resources to, that likely will mean that Aaron and Low Pally get the Rift Herald and get to keep snowballing against this pretty free lane for them so far. Yeah, I think when you think of Aaron um, as a player or, or a CLG face bot lane as, as a whole, it's not necessarily going for the 2v2 kills. It, it is, you know, a little bit of, of scaling and getting ahead in just in terms of the CS department. So getting those extra plates will be pretty big. Mid lane, though, Town doing a lot of damage in onto Leo. Doesn't have a whole lot of energy to work with here, so it doesn't look like it's going to be more than just that trade. But actually, you know, the, the mid lane matchup, not as explosive as I might have anticipated, Smax. This whole game hasn't really been very explosive, yeah, Grapes. Yeah, it's been 10 minutes. Ava. Oh. We're, we're right back to where we were last Monday, where we haven't <laughs> had yeah, very many kills. <laughs> we're 10 minutes in, 0-0, zero, zero, just it's objective like, plays. Back back to the school theme, if you if you will. It's like, you know, you know that scene in, in oh wait, never mind. Can't can't reference movies here, but you're, you're just <laughs> sitting, in, you're sitting in class waiting for, you know, the, the, the clock to kind of hit the end of the day. Summer can, can finally happen. I feel like that's kind of what we're doing right now because you see the potential yeah. here. So much heavy team fighting is available. A lot of big players that, that can really do a whole lot, but they just haven't really gotten to that stage just yet. And so we're just going to have to keep waiting, keep waiting for that clock to continue ticking. It was first break picked up for the bot lane for CLG Faith, so maybe getting to that point a little bit sooner. Yeah, Baco has been doing a great job with, like I said before, he is able to steal that Rift Herald and bring that down for Aaron. Very. Uh, very simple plays, but that's exactly what you need to go for, right? You just have this exact thing, like, okay, this makes the most sense. I'm going to give gold to my AD carry. We're going to scale up and maybe go for a rotation as well to get even more played. As you can see that reflected as well right. in the gold. Aaron, most gold in the game and a lot of blue up there at the top because of that too. He and Baco have been playing together quite well and... You know, that's that's not really something that happens very often with uh, bottom lane and jungle, <laughs> specifically uh, the marksman. <laughs> yeah, normally it's jungle support, not necessarily like the support partner. But yeah, I, I do agree that, you know, Aaron and Aaron and Baco have been working pretty well together. Weren't able to pick that objective up, though, as 300 will even up the dragon score at 1 to 1. Will be the Hextech Drake, big fan of the Hextech, you know. I feel like a Hextech Drake kind of also like has a bit of like a summery vibe to it i don't know if you kind of under if you kind of get what mm. i mean it's like more very fun you get to like zip around like on a zip line through the through the gates and everything okay yeah i, I i'm I trying to thought yeah. about it being a zip line but yeah it kind of is it's just a just a blue like magic-y yeah. zip line it's, it's blue right. as well yeah, yeah like the blue theme it pretty fits I know, that's our that's what we're going with here on on the proven yeah, broadcast yeah. here going for the summer sensations and it looks like now with the top side turret still available here for clg they're going to try to go for it they go for any mm. cheeky invade here let's see what ends up happening oh. the poly does land in onto Raheen to start things off not a whole lot of damage from Aaron oh. though bako also popping the mist to get into the area but a nice disengage by minui engaging with lulu polymorph is not something <laughs> that i have uh, have seen done very often this looks Ooh, more like an hold engage. on yeah that's an engage M maybe Ooh. not too much of an engage though as leo actually fighting really well back here with the emperor's divide sending town under the turret so he has to use that perfect execution very very early to make sure that no solo kill threat is had 
That was kind of clean, Leo. I liked that. He scoops him back up and then dodges perfect execution too. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. Your leg's Surf. broken. Yeah, <laughs> he's just surfing. It's that, that's the theme, right? You're around, around the river, surfing around as well. Man, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm good at this thing. Man. I'm... Okay, he's walking again. We're good. <laughs> there we go. Bug fixed. Bako back into the walking style. Actually, interestingly, going for that Kraken Slayer build as well. We've seen a lot of things oh. like Triforce, Divine Sunder out of Viego's recently, but maybe just looking at that Grave, looking at that Cho'Gath and thinking, okay, I need to kind of shred some people here. Cho'Gath, definitely. Like, you, you really want to shred through all of that HP stacking. Oh, wait, he's on. Yeah. Could be dangerous. Bit He's got backup. Here. Yeah, P Perry is crucially in the area, and and you know Baco is not oh. right now. World Tender popped by Draco. He's gonna dash straight into the arms of Perry. The one v one working very well for the Graves right now. Here comes Baco finally. The sweet spot barely missing out. There comes Ooh. that Senna ultimate as well. Baco now into the midst of the enemy team. Who will get the first Ooh. kill? It will be the Viego first blood to CLG Faith as it gets traded right back. Now what can Town do here in the two v one? Jisung getting chunked very low. No energy left onto the Akali. She'll have to back away. It's a nightmare in the halls of the school right now. School has <laughs> finally exited, and we're just throwing papers everywhere. People are rioting in the locker rooms. Everyone's flashing. It's insane. <laughs> we finally got something here. Let's take another look here at this replay. Draco thinking out it's a 1v1, but the backup coming in. This is school Billy coming to finish the job here tonight. Yeah, honestly. And Perry, he does get into the vision here, but even still, there's no real place for Draco to go. And now we're finally seeing the damage potential of this Diego build, but I think more importantly, we're seeing that it is very frail. <laughs> he does yeah. die super, super quickly. And, and a nice trade. To even, to even make it one for CLG was pretty impressive, considering the kind of timing advantage that 300 had there. Still is two for one in favor of the red team, but despite all that, Smack's still down about a thousand gold. Yeah, that's true. The uh, most important thing here is that Aaron hasn't really had to go for any of these plays yet. He's still just farming up. He, he just finished his mythic as well. That's two Kraken Slayers for their team. This Cho'Gath is shaking in his <laughs> his uh, void boots. What? Hmm. Did, did, I don't. Yeah, does, the Cho'Gath shoe shopping boots? has got to be the worst for Cho'Gath. Yeah, he's like he's growing it, all the time. Yeah, and it's also just like. They don't sell shoes that are that large, right? Like, Canonic yeah, Togath yeah. is very, very big. Like, yeah, I don't even know if they, like, Maybe you don't need them in the void. Is that is that what happens? Like, you know, you're... It's like a world so dark that you don't even need to, to wear shoes. Is that... Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess you... I, I guess the more important thing is, like, what are you stepping on? But maybe right. Togath doesn't care because he's yeah, just that I big. I feel like... Mm, yeah, maybe maybe he doesn't care. I, I feel like that's the kind of what we're going with here. He's just so massive, just crushes everything. Jisung, quick flash away, but is going to barely dodge out from the Spectrum Maw. The Gravitum does land here by Aaron. Oh. Big chunk of damage coming through, Ooh. and that is a beautifully used crescendo, picking up that kill. Great usage of the abilities there by Aaron, just maximizing the amount of Calibrum auto attacks he had. See, I got the right gun there that time. There we go. And he just used every single possible spell there with Calibrum in his backhand so that he landed all of those auto attacks. That was like the, the perfect amount of damage that he pumped in to Jisung. Now with the Rift Herald pop, he's taking a second yeah. turret for himself. Looking for another crash. I don't think he's going to get it. It's uh, some more portal fun times. Okay, so that's that's the maybe why you don't go the Kraken. That's why people have not been going the Kraken <laughs> Slayer, Viego. Beko. Basically vanishing before our eyes before we even got to see what happened up in that top side. So a nice trade back, Minui getting onto the board with that completed Everfrost. Minui's, Minui's got the munch going on right now. Yeah. Uh, no jungle here because of that as Baco is dead. And he's the one with the smite, so Perry's going to scoop in and take this one away. Unfortunately for Minui, he did just use the munch, so he won't get another stack here. He'll have to get bigger later. Well, going to get pretty Seven, big, as you see here. Yeah, tall. I don't... I don't know if there's like a conversion rate for like height to average foot size that we could do here. Maybe Aaron. I know Aaron's like a big shoe guy. Loves like um, picking up like really like nice shoes like the Gucci's and, and, and likes like that. Maybe maybe he'll have a better answer for us. Yeah, maybe. We'll we'll have to. Well, first we need we need CLG to win. Right. Then, then we, we need <laughs> then we need Aaron to accept the interview, and then we need to have Janeiro ask him questions about feet. All of those it's things not need to feet. happen. It's and then, shoes. Then we'll you don't get have to make answer. it weird. You don't have to make it weird, Smack. It's shoes. These are, this I, didn't, I didn't make it weird. I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You are you can think whatever you want about, okay. about my shoe conversation. 
<laughs> the metric system. We got the meter yeah. conversion. Yeah, thank, thank, we do have a lot of non-Americans much. going on on our stream. We're we're being invaded. Yeah, uh, uh, we were we were kind of mentioning this before. We have veteran en engineer here. We have uh, Rudud on the other stream. I believe Echo also mm -hmm. like lived in in EU for a little bit as well. So. A lot of uh, international representation here. Always a good thing to see here in the Proving Ground circuit. And, and right now, looking to see who will continue playing in this matchup here. CLG Faith off to a pretty good start, snowballing the bot lane, which has not necessarily been exactly what they have always um, been aligned with. But to keep this up, Aaron will be a very, very scary force later on. Yeah, it's something that Baco really has just like had that circumstance to do in this game. I think a lot of that is because Perry has just been clearing away from them every single time. And that's something that does begin very early on in the game as Draco getting bumped around. Three members here at the top side for 300. Draco does have the flash to maybe try to escape in a little bit here. There's a dash over. Perry Ooh. trying to follow. Nice use of the blast cone. It looks like Draco will survive. Man, and Perry used his flash there, too. That's yeah. a very unfavorable trade for 300. They're going to get this turret, but they're going to lose out on a lot on the rest of the rift. They don't get that 300 gold lane. they were looking for. Bot lane turret's dead. Mid lane turret is under fire. This is a very, very nice outplay for Draco that has a lot of lasting effects on the rest of the rift. Now the question is, who stops first here in this semi-base race? Looks like teleports are going to be channeled here by town. Looks like CLG Faith, they want to fight for this next. He's on a ward, though. He's on a few wards. They definitely know that he is here. And oh, look at that! Gate, yep. Portal game! Surfing away! <laughs> <laughs> play, play, the, play the summary music there. It's catching a wave, heading back over. Parry will die, but it's only one kill for CLG. Just took a dip in the river right there, all <laughs> the way across the barren. Buff. It's like a submarine. You're going underneath the rift all over. Ooh. Yeah. Scuba diving. That's, that's how we make it summer-themed, right. yeah? There we go. Yeah. Submarines, yeah. Maybe not, maybe not a summer-themed, a summer but... Still involving the river, still involving the ocean. Three to three right now as he approaches the 20-minute mark. <laughs> it's been a very, very s slow-paced game, Smacks, but I don't think we were really unex that was really an unexpected thing because of you know just like how the, we like, we're expecting these teams to kind of play. Yeah, super even in terms of the gold right now, 20 minutes in as we are. Uh, definitely going to again favor Aaron. I do want to highlight him one more time because it looks like he's going for the Bloodthirster build, a very expensive. Uh, right. itemization choice for the Aphelios, but one that is really strong once you get later on into the game. And uh, they, they recently did cut down on a lot of the lifesteal items. Bloodthirster is really the only one that still has a meaningful amount of it because you, you have Legend Bloodline that's cut down to, I believe, 6% lifesteal. Maybe it's lower now. I don't even know. But it's, it's very, yeah. very minimal. The Kraken Slayer, I think, is down to like 10 or 7% or something. Bloodthirster is 18 so you do actually get a that's lot of a lot. Yeah, that, that I didn't realize how how big of a difference it was from some of the other yeah. Omni Vamp items that are in the game. That's a lot. And also the shield that it provides here for Aaron. You know, the Cephelios is definitely the primary target for the likes of, of Leo or going for one of those dives. And so having a little bit of extra survivability here for the CLG main carry definitely will be pretty good for them. It's it's a really solid strength to have on your team especially in terms of that sustain because like we were saying in the lane they do have a lot more sustain on the side of 300 thanks to this senna for aaron specifically but also draco once the big team by explosions come through they're going to be thankful that they did have that sustain and hey wouldn't you know it town also wanting to heal up some yeah. as he did go for the rift maker build that's it's funny. the dirty it's the durability patch that's what we're here for yep. that, that's what's going on even even the collies building Pretty, pretty bruisery at this point. Ooh. Demonic Embrace potentially coming in next. Tele yeah, teleport though, coming in for Draco into the bottom side. This dragon spawning in about 15 seconds. Looks like CLG have a pretty good positioning around it. Draco not on vision yet, but he's seemingly Ooh, attempting this. to as they're trying to close in. 300 really grouped up better right now. They do have the tank advantage with Manui, 3k HP. See if they can survive Ooh, this Aaron, be careful. Yep, just barely getting away. Now to the backside, the Soul Landers have arrived. Team fight begun here. Draco popping the World Ender, healing up a storm. But here comes Leo, landing Ooh. the Emperor's Divide in, in on to Aaron. But it does not matter. Two straight kills here for CLG, and it might be more Minui getting bursted down. And Baco will be able to pick that one up. Here comes Town here with the final Shuriken, and that is a fight surely won for CLG. And 300 just did not see the flank coming as Raheen now being bullied underneath this turret. They will miss out on this Drake. And even though they took down Aaron, the guy who has so much gold, it's the flank that matters more in the end. They only have that one ward spotting out town. But it's already too late. It's already in motion. I want to check a look 
at how much damage Bako actually is dealing, because it feels like the Kraken Slayer build is finally paying off. He's able to get oh. that first reset and then continue shredding everybody. And look, now all of a sudden, he's up to 2k HP because <laughs> he steals the choke out, killing through the tanks. And CLG just spread apart that team fight in such a uh, methodical way. Yeah, really great usage there of the Hex Gates as well, allowing for Draco and Town to get such amazing positioning here. When you have this composition for 300 that likes to stay grouped together, likes to maybe poke out the enemy before an engagement really begins, having that disruption there by Draco and Town was so crucial for CLG. They effectively split you know, that fight onto multiple fronts with Town and Low Pally kind of working on one side and the rest of the team taking down the other members around the Dragon. And you see that, see that what happens with the gold there. 300 all of a sudden right back to a, a pretty, actually, no, a pretty close deficit. Still about 1,000. Game still in, could be in anyone's hand. Yeah, I mean, we saw from that gold right there, the, the most gold lead there's ever been has been 1.6k. Yeah. It's not I really saw, anything. I saw it go all the way to the top, and I was like, oh, it must be so much gold. But it's just how close <laughs> these teams have been playing the entire time. Yeah, pretty well. Oh, Raheen. And, oh, Raheen. Oh, Raheen. Oh. In so much Let's trouble here. Town. Time. Man, Town does a lot of damage, and he's still so tanky as well. Minwi in a lot of trouble here. Perry's gonna have to use that ultimate Ooh. away, but Town dashes in again, perfectly executed as the name suggests. A triple kill for the Akali as CLG Faith looking for Baron. They're moving over to that Baron. They've got so much shred. We thought they were shredding Cho'Gath, but really, with the double Kraken, the Baron is the true Void Beast that they want to <laughs> slay in this game. Town on this flank. I mean, you said it in that last fight. He's so tanky. You can't walk in because he has so much extra HP with this build. And there's even Low Pally here backing him up. They're going to be able to catch the mid wave all the while taking this Baron Nasher. And the Faith are being rewarded right now, Graves. CLG <laughs> might just close out this game from here. I had a bit of an internal timer in my head. I was wondering when like the first reference of that would, would happen here in this series. Looks like 2445 <laughs> is the, the timer here. I I'm surprised I didn't say it before you did, Smax, honestly. But, but still, <laughs> CLG of 4,000 gold at this point, picking up the Baron buff, and, and they have a lot of really good side laners as well. They can really pressure on all the lanes right now. This has got to feel so good also for CLG that they, they did what... We, we laid out for them was possible. Myra talked to me about how they're really confident in the early game, and if they can get that down, they will have enough to snowball through the rest of this game. It hasn't been completely explosive. They haven't been the most dominant team from there, but they knew what they needed to do. They knew who needed to get the gold, and in the team fight, they knew exactly how to execute that. Again, that was so clean from them. Yeah, they had the portals, but they had Draco on the flank anyway. They had good positions no matter what rift it was that doesn't just go away if you get the 20 20 percent chance that you have the hextech <laughs> rift so clg they're they're very clearly playing well as a as an entire team even when the fights are a lot more scattered than you would expect and, and that's great to see out of clg you know playing the map yeah I, I would say this is a composition that is a little bit harder to execute you know than maybe the likes of some other teams that we've seen throughout the tournament, but it's about the scaling angle that I think Myra and the rest of the CLG organization have said, both in the amateur organization as well as their higher levels of competition as well. You know, really just having, yeah, I guess, faith in the players here. And, and we see Town playing really well, Aaron having an amazing game as well. The players really starting to show their stuff in the second week. I really love seeing this growth from these teams, and especially after taking a pretty crushing loss in their last bout. This is a, a very, very big sign of life for them. Is again, we're we've been we've been told from a lot of CLG members to watch out for Town, watch him be the big, big carry for the team and be very impressive mechanically speaking. We're getting that from yep. this Akali game. <laughs> we got it from his Akali last week too, but you might just have to ban this champion. Yeah. Maybe Draco is freed up. I, I, I was going to say, like, it, it would be pretty surprising to see this Akali come through again, just based on how yeah. well Town played throughout their, their matchup against Team Pending on this pick. But looks like he'll get his hands on it at least for one <laughs> more game here. May, maybe this is finally the time that Draco gets a little bit of breathing room. He might have more HP than Cho'Gath right now. Can we I, check? Yeah, let's He's got like 3.3k. All right, math, math test but, now. We're in school, right? Manui does have an anathema. It, it's probably not, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, it's 4k. Okay. It's, it, 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 it's the fact that it's so it close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially without the, the feast stacks, he would definitely be there. So that's pretty that's pretty terrifying. See how tanky Town can be here in this engage. Draco going to dash away here after popping the stopwatch. And it looks like CLG very primed to garner soul point here off of this tech tech. 300 don't want to do anything about it just yet. They don't have to fight for the soul as it's not available now. 
I, but I will say, Smax, you know, the team fighting out of 300 has been really impressive so far. If they can find a good engage, you know, Aaron bursting down instantly could be pretty big. We'll see if it happens here. There's that ultimate locking down two onto the backside, and Draco is now in the oh. midst of 300. Gonna get knocked back a little bit, but Manui's in the wrong place. Baco picking up the first kill of the fight. Find the rupture here on the hijack. Not just yet. Beautifully uh, placed Emperor's Divide coming out from Leo to only make it one kill. And Draco actually just tanked the entire full front of all of 300's damage and did not die. Didn't even come close to dying. He's still at half HP thanks to the sustain from Low Pally and the Gore Drinker. That is not good news for 300. If they cannot kill the one frontline member with all of their damage combined, they're going to be losing out on more structures on this rift. They already lost out on that Hextech Drake from before. And even though that that Baron that CLG had from before did not actually break apart any of these inhibitor turrets, it might as well have if 300 can't do anything in these skirmishes. It's, yeah, I mean, that that was kind of 300's angle. You saw CLG getting spending some time on that dragon. They had the advantageous position to maybe open up priority in that mid lane, crack open that base a little bit more. But it, it is kind of interesting to take a look at the way that this, the, this game has been going here, Smax. In terms of towers, it's only 5-4 to four for CLG, but it feels like they just have so much more control over the map. They really do. It's, it's a slow burn. Which is like fine, you know. We, we we've had some slow games. I'm not bitter about it, grapes. You know, it, it just, I'm I'm down for the slow games. It makes especially the payoff if we're getting better. clean gameplay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the payoff. You're the, right. The great 35 minute full item Aphelios, like five v five, like one v nine pentakill here with the ult. Uh, I might be putting yeah. a little bit too much um, confidence in Aaron right now. He hasn't gotten to that just yet. Still at three, but I would say three very strong items with the Infinity Edge as well. It feels like we pre-ordered a CLG Faith win like 10 minutes ago, and now we're just <laughs> waiting for it to release. Waiting you know? for the, the delivery driver <laughs> to show up. Exactly. <laughs> we we know it's coming. We can we can see it happening on our screen, but the <laughs> estimated date is like a, a range of like seven to eight business days, and we're just like, all right, what? You're just waiting. We're... You keep tracking. You keep tracking the the shipping, and then it's like it's like in this random place in Indiana for like two days straight, and you're not sure what's going on with <laughs> <laughs> that. Exactly. We're we're getting some fun facts uh, while we're while we're waiting for the package to arrive. Yeah, Town exactly. knows how to talk to dolphins. So I saw this fun fact from before, and I right. want to call him out on this because I also know how to talk to dolphins. Uh, and in fact, so, grapes, you also know how to talk to dolphins. Everybody in the Twitch what? chat knows how to talk to dolphins. Okay, you just it, don't it, know what they're saying yeah, back. I'm I'm with production here. I don't. I'm not sure how. Oh, I see. I got it. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there, Smack. Um, yeah, I, I guess, can, I guess I can so. say as I many can, words can, to a dolphin <laughs> as I want. I mean, are you in the vicinity of a, of a dolphin? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that counts. Also, have to be in the area of a dolphin as well. I know you're up in Michigan. Not sure how many dolphins are, are around there. Um, I, don't, I don't think there are any fresh in the, up in the up in the Midwest. So. Yeah. <laughs> Draco's getting a turret. Yeah, Draco's getting a turret. A lot of priority down to this bot lane for CLG Faith. The Baron is up, and you see that you know Baco in town are hovering around the pit, looking to kind of catch out any stragglers. Uh, these are two champions that can definitely 1v1 a target and basically send them 100 to 0 if they get caught out. So, see them just making sure that none of the prey is in the area yet. You know, maybe like a dolphin, just waiting for the little fishies to kind of run by. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 300 is definitely waiting for something. I just don't know what it is at this point because they, they've got some scaling just intrinsically with Raheem playing the Senna. They've got an Azir on their team that will eventually scale up, but... It definitely doesn't feel like they've built in a way that supplements that, you know, because for Leo, a lot of the a lot of the DPS that comes in with the Zier builds is from the Nashers too, where you get a lot of the attack speed, yeah. you get to just keep wailing away with your sand soldiers. That is not something that he decided to build in his first three items, and it's not coming next either. It's gonna be a death cap, most likely with the needles that are drawn, so I'm just not certain like when that's gonna come through. Fifth item Nashers Tooth feels pretty late and I don't know, maybe, maybe Azir no. builds have changed over the years, but this doesn't feel very satisfying to me. It, it, for it's the more like carry. the, yeah, it's like the one-shot Azir build, I guess, where you, like, just yeah. kill them with the ulti, potentially. That hasn't happened just yet, but Leo has had some decent engages, crucially knocking Aaron into some of the enemy team and, and making him that lone casualty in the fight that they had around the dragon. Um, but yeah, not in terms of consistent DPS, which is surprising considering the Conqueror also here 
um, right. just for more consistent damage. But we do see some hovering Ooh, around this mid lane. Baron also, you know, being a topic of conversation, but Minwi has to flash away early. That is so much damage coming out from Aaron Town. Now under the Azir turret as well, Jisung gonna get shurikened right Ooh. in and nearly taken down, but it's already two dead for the side of 300. Jisung forced to flash away. Town ends up surviving under three members as well, and it looks like everything is going CLG's way. The flanks for CLG are just causing so much havoc right now, Grapes. This is so filthy. Man. We're teleporting into yet another Baron. The flank <laughs> there from town. Under the under the Azir turret too, like watch yeah. this one again. Firstly, Manui is just not a tank right now. He, <laughs> he has a big HP bar, but the double Kraken Slayer and the, the Marksman coming through just are proving that he is not nearly as durable as he thought he was. And then the rest of the team just has to go on the run again. The entire team is not even able to burst one member that's in front of their face. This is super, super bad news. They just lost another team fight and that Baron a second. They got, they got Soul as well, Smax. It's a two for one special here. Oh, like when you, we, the, oh. We're waiting for the delivery and then they, you know, they, they say apology for the wait. Here's a little bit of an extra. Extra little goodie alongside the package. You get the soul, you get the Baron. Nice. Now you get a 10,000 gold, 8,000 gold lead as well. Like the late game finally starting to show up here for CLG. See a lot of items coming through. Three on every single main carry. And it looks like it might be four soon with that PD picked up for Aaron. Yeah, I think the I think the Hextech soul is expedited shipping. They, they should end yeah. a, a bit faster now <laughs> that they have that one. The Manui, nice he's speedy. even less tanky now as he's going to get hit by all of the chain lightning there. The slows are coming through, even more utility. And we're seeing Draco, he's, he's setting up for multiple waves to be crashed into the same time right now, too. They've already got the mid wave working its way through, but Draco now, he's he's got effectively full build, right? You, you got three and a half That's items on the top lane tank, you're I mean... 18, you're good. <laughs> Getting the Spirit Visage will be nice, you know, especially considering not a whole lot of Grievous Wounds other than that uh, Thornmail picked up here by the side of yep. 300. Um, Aatrox healing, I, I've been saying this, Aatrox ult is, is just so, so strong with all the healing that it's able to provide. Town, maybe caught out a little bit here, but again, very tanky Akali as well. It's just all these all these players seem so durable, Smex. They're trying to crash all three waves at the same time right now. Draco's still completely uncontested as... 300 are really more interested in keeping an eye on town. I can't blame him for that. He has just been so scary <laughs> in every single one of these plays. So bring a lot of members over there. But looks like CLG are going to be crashing everybody to help him out. And with that Riftmaker, he's up to a pretty respectable health total. So this is going to be another inner turret cracking. I believe that is uh, that is all of them dead now. Yeah, oh, and, and you know what? You know what I just realized, Grapes? Hold right. on one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Azir turret is counting in the total in the top. You see that? They have eight turrets. They have, yeah, they don't have killed six. Huh. That's funny because it's uh, it's the Azir turret that's counting that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so you that's the goal. Like you, this this could set the proving grounds <laughs> qualifier record. Yeah, most actually, towers taken in a game. I, I, I don't know. If production <laughs> can get a stat on that one, but it, it could be it could happen here. Yeah, could just be, keep. It could the be game witnessing going. history. Oh wait. Oh yeah. All right. Now we have proof that the Aphelios turret doesn't count. Because otherwise, the okay, yeah. would have just killed one of those. <laughs> I feel like that's a much like lower scale turret, like you know. It's yeah, just, like, you know that's another fair. mob. It counts as like a CS, I think, for whoever. Maybe it needs like, like a Heimerdinger ult. Yeah, yeah. It, it, is that big enough? <laughs> but I even find that. You'd have to. You'd well, have the most to go is 11, back right? in the. The yeah, most is the 11 because that's the amount 11. of powers. Mm -hmm. So anything if, if it's over 11, yeah. I mean, they have actually, yeah, they're going to break the record. They have to crack another one of the inhibitor towers, and they're going to get the two nexus turrets as well, right? I mean, I want to see it. Oh wait, I want to yeah. see it happen. CLG. Let's see. Let's see history be made here, CLG. It's it's been a pretty <laughs> methodical, you know, end game here for this team. Been a bit slow in terms of closing it out, but they definitely have all the priority in the world at this point. 300 really just suffocating under under their own base. They're going to have to make a move soon. Or else the base will just continue to crack. The towers will just continue to crumble. Here it is. This is going to be the tenth turret. If they, if they kill this, history that, will be made. Well, they have to win the game as well. So that. Uh, they, uh, yeah, you're right. Well, they don't have to win the game. They just well, they could get all the nexus turrets and, and then <laughs> they lose. They get the nexus turret. <laughs> Most turrets ever in a loss as well. I mean, that would be <laughs> that'd be a crazy stat. Like something you see like on one of those like, um, like broadcasts that they do for for sports as well. Bako yeah. finally breaking it down. There is tower number 10. Yep, zoom in on that one. It's all gone. <laughs> no more standing here. 
Um, but for CLG Faith, I mean, we're, we're kind of, you know, hamming it up a little bit, Smacks, but they have not found an angle to end the game just yet. They have not found that engage. They're kind of have to go for yet another Baron and maybe the Elder Dragon as well to potentially close things out. Yeah, they're playing really risk averse right now, which is very respectable. They, they've got a solid solid lead in this game they shouldn't lose from here and again it harkens back to what we were saying before they're they're a team that is confident in their ability to take a lead and win the game through it and that's exactly what we are seeing right now um now i, I, I we're, are we getting a bit reminded of the the clg game that happened like a year ago that took like 70 minutes and <laughs> they lost maybe is that the but, one against like tsm that like just like kept going or was it like an international one I think that no, it was definitely NA. I think it was against Immortals, the CLG Immortals game. Some I, I remember Azale tweeting out it was like that was the worst game I've ever seen. <laughs> We're not there just yet, but 300 actually not gonna <laughs> find the engage here. Black Mist by Raheen will hide away a couple of the members. Aaron getting poked out a little bit, just burning that shield as Draco continue to get poked in. The rupture will land in onto the H Crocs and. We're just waiting for a fight to happen, Smacks. That turret also standing in the mid lane, but they might lock down Aaron. There comes the Donnie Shadow as well, but the re-engage from CLG will come through. Parry trying to go for a one-shot, but won't be able to find it just yet. Bako now face tanking too, and here comes Aaron, still alive with the wild growth, and here comes the dive. Two dead Leo trying to save the game, but it won't happen. That's a double kill on the town. Nobody on the faithful die, and it's a triple kill for the Akali. Our package has finally arrived, Smacks. It might be a bit worn down, but one CLG faith victory is coming right up. And count them here. Wait. No. Wait. Are you kidding? Wait, no. They FF'd. It's only 11. <laughs> no. You can't be. <laughs> you cannot be serious right now. Are you? No. We just wanted to see the number go. I wanted to see That's the 12. Allowed. Where's the <laughs> They just what? FF'd. Oh, no. The game, the game was, you know, of course, over. But, but we were we about to make history here, Smacks. You and you and me, and they took they took that away from us. Three hundred, just don't want to see us happy Come right on. now. <laughs> I can't believe it. I didn't even know FFing was allowed. I feel like they just did that to troll us, Graves. I, you on. know, we'll we'll have a talk with them maybe maybe a little bit later. Set set their set themselves straight. Maybe have yes. Leo pick his ear again so that that can happen. Detention again for all of you. <laughs> School's out, but there's still detention here for 300. Either way, very clean game from CLG Faith Max. Yeah. It was it was very good all the way through. They they got the early lead and they rolled with it, which is what they've been doing time and time again. Mm -hmm. They they punished the the clear from 300 where Perry just cleared away from bottom lane in a matchup where this there's a double ranged and I say this all the time as a support player I hate being on an island against double ranged champions it feels the worst and that is what 300 felt right now because Bako made his way down to there he was able to steal away that Rift Herald and take away that turret and Aaron just was out of control and when you have an AD carry that's doing very well in a comp like that. You can't really do anything because if you jump on the AD carry, you have all these flankers attacking you from every single angle. And that's what we saw. Every single fight that 300 tried to take, they already felt like they were losing. And that's why they didn't try very many times. Yeah, I feel like we've kind of labeled 300 as a team that really likes to team fight, really likes to wait to that late game. But it really seemed like they were never in a position where they had the opportunity to go for one of those plays. You know, we saw some some attempts that engages here with Raheen going for some cheeky uh, Black Mist plays down in the mid side at the end. But just was not enough there for the side of 300. And now they find themselves one match away from being eliminated. And that's really um, not something that a lot of us were expecting, just given the strength of some of yeah. these players. Absolutely, yeah. We just saw a lot of them play very well in the last split. We had uh, we had both Leo and Perry actually make it to the main Proving Grounds stage. It's a really big deal for them. And yeah, I, I fully agree with you. I, I can tell that for these players who were really close to beating AoE, one of the highest seeded yeah. teams in our entire tournament just last week, this is not where they want their tournament to end. They do want to keep playing and try to get into that playoffs. Well, something that comes with experience is resilience, and we'll see if 300 are able to have any of that in terms of working back for a crucial game three. Gonna send it over to the desk right now. Janeiro will certainly be happy about that last game. Let's hear it from them.